All right, you can stop with all the tweets and the YouTube comments, okay? Let's look at the science of Peter Parker's web shooters. Let's stay out of the whole organic versus mechanical web shooter debate for now and focus on the silk itself first. Either way, Parker's gonna have to make this stuff. In the most recent reboot of the Spider-Man films that totally won't get rebooted again, Peter Parker creates his web shooters by installing readily available materials from Oscorp that mimic spider silk. Mechanically created or not, the secret to spider silk strength comes in its structure. Spider silk is one of nature's very finest composite materials. Silk spinning spiders produce their silk by extruding proteins out of spinnerets located near their backside. These spinnerets are like cones covered in hundreds of smaller and even tinier cones. And out of these is what comes the protein slurry or what's called the dope because it is. Now here's the part we don't fully understand. As the protein dope comes out of the spider's spinnerets, it's produced in such a way so that the silk produced has an outer sheath that is a hard crystalline structure and the inner part of the silk is more gooey, kind of like the dope itself. This combination of composition is what makes spider silk so strong. If Peter Parker, who is apparently some kind of science whiz, could harness Oscorp's mixture or make his own, then he might be able to shoot out silk from his mechanical web shooters in the same way that a spider does with dozens and hundreds and thousands of miniature spinnerets. And it could even take his weight if it came out at a thickness of maybe one millimeter or so. That covers mechanical web shooters, but what about the organic kind like those in the original Spider-Man film? As in all the comics and movies, the source of Peter Parker's power comes from a bite of a radioactive spider, which changes his body in a few key ways, it gives him spider sense, and superhuman strength and agility. The bite also gave Peter new organs on his wrists that were able to produce silk in the same way that spider spinnerets do. How likely is this? Well, considering that we can genetically engineer goats to produce spider silk proteins, it's not that crazy to think that a genome warping spider bite might be able to give Parker the same ability. Now let's make this silk worthy of a superhero. A few months ago, scientists tried spraying down spiders with our own super materials to see if their silk would get stronger. The scientists took a few groups of spiders and then sprayed them down with a water-based mixture of either graphene or carbon nanotubes. Some of the spiders died and some of the spiders produced silk that was actually weaker than normal, but some of the spiders sprayed down with the carbon nanotubes somehow incorporated it into their own silk and produced strands that were up to three times stronger. This is what Peter Parker could do if he still had access to something like Oscorp Labs. He could incorporate carbon nanotubes into his own special web shooter mix, or he could take a bunch of them and dilute them in water and drink gallons of the stuff and try not to die. That sounds like a plan. Oh, and one more thing. There's nothing about Spider-Man that is unique to spiders. Something like geckos have hairs on their feet that let them stick to stuff, and there's no such thing as a spider sense unless you're actually on a web and spiders aren't particularly strong for their size. Why? Because science. And another thing, you know what does Want more science? Check out my last video on how Quicksilver can listen to music. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos. If you want Because Science two days earlier than anyone else, head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks.